Well, it's been a busy week at Garage Mahal. It's been a strange week at Garage Mahal. Well, that is the great understatement. Yes. What, what's that famous curse? Uh, may you live in interesting times. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Well, at any rate, I did finish the big pond. Uh, when last we spoke, there was one half inch still to go. And uh, I went ahead and did the third and final pour making the pond one and a half inches deep, and it is now finished. Good deal. And I'm now working on underbrush. Yes. And baby trees. And I've hit a technique. You sure have. Those look a lot better. I wonder if I can perfect the technique, we'll do a show on that. And and Steve has been busy building this windmill that for the layout. That is awesome. And we have a diabolical plan for that. And I've been working on my old elementary school. In N scale. Yes, it's pretty small. And I'll scratch build at that. Right, no plans, just what I remember. And that would be a challenge. I've been thinking how hard it would be for me to try to model my grade school after all these years. I'm just glad in, this it, one was small. <laughs> yeah, just for memory. And then uh, you woke up in the middle of the night the other night. Oh, yeah, to smoke, and I couldn't breathe. And I, I actually ran outside to see if the neighbor's house was on fire. It was that strong. And it wasn't the neighbor. No. It was this uh, office building uh, just in the neighborhood there. And an arsonist had decided to uh, to set fire to it. Oh, yeah. Isn't that something and in it, this terrific heat? It was 107 degrees, and this idiot sets fire to this building. And it was a beautiful, beautiful all wood structure and now it uh, it is no more yeah. yeah and then two days later another one another one i opened up the door to go work outside on the railroad and less than a mile from garage mahal the new mill creek city center was Go on, yeah going up in flames under construction a complete blaze yeah the 100 foot high flames destroyed both of these huge cranes and uh, a major piece of the new Mill Creek City Center. All of this, of course, when it's over 100 degrees outside. Right, you could feel the heat. We were just up the block a ways, but you could feel the heat from that. Yeah, no kidding. I've, that's, I've never seen anything quite oh, like this. just awful. And uh, so anyway, it has been an interesting yes. and eventful week. <laughs> So let's get back to your school project. That would actually be fun if this little school actually existed still, but it does not. It too burned down. It did. It got, that's what's spooky is I was working on this when this other fire happened. But yes, this school was constructed probably in the early 60s. And when I went to school, it was brand new. But uh, about 1992, after it was added on to to accommodate a larger student population, it got on fire one night um, and went up in a blaze of glory. So what an interesting idea to try to model your elementary school from memory. Right, I had fond memories of this little school. It was a fun little school, really small, just one of every every grade. And I think there was about, on average about 20 students per classroom. And speaking of really small, you did it in end scale. Yes, I might as well, because you know it's got to take up some space somewhere. But. That's right. Well, and you have an affinity for end scale. I do. I love small little buildings and, and end scale. Because these figures are only about a tenth of an inch tall. <laughs> right, they're really tiny. <laughs> they're really, really tiny. And as we mentioned, Steve is working on a windmill. He is. And he's still tearing apart his entire layout. I know, I can't believe it. And uh, the plan was to tear the layout apart and move into a different house. But in the meantime, real estate prices here have gone to the roof. Oh, they're nuts. The house just down the street from Garage Mahal is $500,000. Right. And, and it's just a house. It's just a garden variety house. The one mm -hmm. next door to it is $1.2 million. Yeah, and it's a little more substantial, but still just a house. It's just a house. So uh, now the plan might be to stay in this house, but he still wants to tear the entire layout apart and convert this into the ultimate modeling room because he enjoys building well it's a hole upstairs so yeah but he's uh he's kind of given up on the idea of having a great big huge massive layout right mostly what he's doing with the structures and leftover pieces is selling them to local modelers who also work in o scale 
Uh, this is the uh, the elephant in the room. Of course, it's not literally an elephant. That's an expression. But these huge mines, not only are they gigantic, but they're really hard to get to. And he's, uh, he's sort of concerned about how he's going to get those down. But he wants to do what he's done here, turn it into a diorama. And they're neat. Now, as we mentioned, he is building us a windmill. That's cool. Is that the neatest darn windmill? It's huge because uh, it's uh, one one twenty point three scale or one twenty one twenty point two scale. Anyway, one twentieth scale. It's a foot and a half tall. Yes. And it's functional. Oh. <laughs> wow! Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Of course, one hundred percent scratch built. Everything he does is scratch built. But. Um, he is, this is the third, I think, third windmill, I think he said, second at least, because he originally modeled this uh, windmill in O scale right. for his own railroad, and he's, he's keeping that model, it's sitting here on the workbench, and then he's using that plus the plans uh, as a guide to build the large windmill, which is going to go right here on the logging rail. That is so cool. So there's this huge canyon at the far end of the logging railroad, which we haven't even started on yet. And um, the windmill will be up here. This is the inspiration for the big canyon. It's this famous painting. <laughs> yes, I love that painting. It's, it's kind of symbolic of my life sometimes. Yeah, there, we, we've all sort of been there, metaphorically mm -hmm. speaking. But yep. we want to, it's a, a great jumping off point, pun intended. Oh, oh. yes. When you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. And I found this bowl. No bowl. Um, that is a, oh. So he's going to be drinking from the trough over at the windmill. <laughs> yes, I know where his cousin lives. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's made of metal, though, and he's on top of a cafe. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, here's here's the windmill, and uh, uh, you can even blow wind at it, and it spins around. Of course, it doesn't actually pump water, but the entire mechanism for uh, guiding this into or out of the wind is 100% functional. Wow. So the way these things worked in the, the real world is if you wanted the thing to pump water, you angled the blades 90 degrees to the fin at the back, and that would direct the blades into the wind. And uh, using this mechanism right here, if you wanted to shut the windmill off, you could rotate the blade section so that it was parallel with the giant fin, and then that shuts it off. Here's the, the O scale. That's little. That's little, I mean, compared to the F scale standing next to it. <laughs> but look how neat that turned out. Uh, of course, again, completely scratch built. But uh, he's very, very detailed yes. in how he puts these things together, uh, even doing the well casing and the water pipe. Here we can see the operating mechanism. And in this case, it's angled in such a way that the windmill will stop. It's all based on these plans that were published in the, the Gazette, the Narrow Gauge Gazette, back in the year uh, 2000. Wow. Yeah, really neat plans and uh, very inspirational. So anyway, that's the basis of the window. And as I mentioned earlier, we finished the pond. We did. Look at that. With your fish in there. <laughs> I know. I keep walking over there going, what? It looks, I mean, it looks like real water. And it looks like real fish. I need to put a little sign right here that says, catch the fish. If you can. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're now working on the backdrop. Right. Now, this backdrop we started years and years and years ago. Uh, but this is how it mounts to the, uh, the existing railroad, and now we need to finish the backdrop. Right. So that's one of the projects that we're working on simultaneously, along with all of these others. And then here are the little baby pine trees and the underbrush. And uh, there may uh, be a Bigfoot for this area as well. A Bigfoot? <laughs> that, that's an upcoming thing. Anyway, here are my little baby pine trees. And I've just, I figured out this technique for making little miniature baby pine trees. And then it hit me, you know, I think these could look really good on a N scale or even HO scale. Absolutely. Look at that road. So I'm going to share this technique because they make a pretty decent looking pine tree. And they only take about 20 minutes to make. 
I could steal one from my little school, but we didn't have a pine tree except at Christmas. Well, fake, fake <laughs> it. Fake it. <laughs> or put Christmas lights in yes, it, whichever way you want to go, go with that. Put it in that. the hallway where we Put it, it in the hallway with lights in it. Anyway, I've made uh, about a dozen of these so far, and I'm going to make about two dozen more, and then we'll do a show on uh, how these little guys are made. That is neat. Now, here's another project I've been working on this week. Oh, please. Yeah, please, please, please. That was a hard one. This is a hard one. Oh. This is the sound system for the logging railroad. Yes. And actually, it's going to be a sound system for the entire railroad. But phase one is the sounds for the pond. Now, making the background sounds is easy for me because I've been doing sound design for 50, 60, you know, over Most 50 years. Most of your years. life you were born doing sound design. But this is the tricky part for me. These are the little sound boards that will mount to the layout. Uh, but fortunately, one of the subscribers to the channel here is helping me. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. I put this together, turned it on, and it was in a dead short. But fortunately, it didn't blow up. Um, it works from headphones and uh, sounds really good and the triggers work now i just need to figure out how to make the amplifier and the speakers work yes and we'll have a sound system for for the pond nice and now the nightmare uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people have been asking, why aren't you doing anything on the outdoor railroad? Oh, trust me, I'm, I'm working on yeah, it. Yeah, between you and nature. I'm tearing it apart. Yes. Because it got through the winter just fine, and it was looking good, and I thought, well, that's, that's all good until the temperature broke 100 degrees, and everything started to warp and crack and come loose. Yep. And um, so I've started dismantling the entire deck section. And I have figured out why the whole thing failed, and I'm not very happy about it. Um, uh, long story short, or short story long, anyway, there, there will be a show on rebuilding all of this and how to avoid running into this same problem on your own garden railroad should you want to build uh, an elevated railroad like this out in your own yard. Right. But... Um, a couple of design problems, several different construction problems. Uh, the people who worked on this, um, well, they uh, they snuck a few things uh. and didn't uh, didn't quite get it um, didn't quite get it up to specifications. The the let's proper say. word is corner cutting. Corner cutting. And you can see where the corners have been cut. And now the corners are falling apart. Right. So anyway, um, I've started the dismantling process out here, and uh, we are getting the same guy that built it to rebuild it. Uh -huh. uh, but this time, um, it's like, this is how it's got to be rebuilt, and this is how it's going to go back together. And uh, what we're going to be getting rid of is this section here. I really think this would have worked. We had Steve look at it, and he said, had the diagonal brace gone all the way down to the footing, it would have worked just fine provided the horizontal brace had actually been attached to the vertical pole. Right. But it wasn't. It's just sitting on top of these brackets. Aye. And so uh, as the wood expands and contracts and, and whatnot, um, these are just pulling away from the vertical posts and a crack is opening up and that's causing the whole shelf section of the layout to tip forward. What a mess. Dumping everything off onto the lawn. And um, when I first noticed this, there was just a small gap back there. Now, just a few days later, at 107 degrees right. outside, but I can now fit my entire uh, fingers between the horizontal elements and the, and the, uh, the vertical elements. So anyway, dismantling, yep. taking right. apart carefully. Take two because all this stuff is going to get reused. However, I'm also thinking because some issues came up with the track. Mm. I had already planned on taking the track out and replacing with Yagas Creek oh. Code 250, which is what we're using inside and it works brilliantly. Right. 
and the uh, the larger uh, stuff with the LGB switches has not worked super well. Anyway, track is off, roofing material is off, we're back down to the wood, put all of this stuff away out of harm's way, and we're currently working on now tearing out the deck section. Right. To rebuild that, and then we'll be reusing all of the, the vertical posts, but everything else is going to get torn out and mm -hmm. redone, which is which is uh, disturbing. Right. But it could have been worse. Yes, I was going to say it could look like the Mill Creek complex. Yeah, that's uh, this 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 was worse. Right. I, in that heat, I just worry about spontaneous combustion. Well, and and working on the railroad outside, so it's almost like the pandemic is back. We're we're locked mm -hmm. inside. Called a heat wave. Well, anyway, there's the uh, the news from Garage Mahal. Oh, boy. <laughs> so uh, over the next few weeks, we'll be following up with each and every one of these stories and seeing them all the way through to completion. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just sort of a potpourri. Right. Well, if, you, uh, if you're not a subscriber, here comes your golden opportunity. <laughs> the blue button. <laughs> there it's not, it is. <laughs> it's not really golden. It's blue. Yes. At any rate, if you're not a subscriber, click there well we're not sure how you found this video on the internet we hope you didn't find it boring and we will see you here on tuesday because we got something fun to show you